Hey there viewers and welcome back to the channel. My name's Matt and today we're continuing the playthrough of Police Quest 2. Where we left off is we just searched the airport looking for Baines. We managed to recover a gun that he stashed as well as get some information from a couple of people about him potentially renting a car and potentially flying to Houston. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drive back to the station as we kind of exhausted all our leads here at this point. Pretty much in Police Quest 2, once you've exhausted your leads, you just drive back to the station and usually something will either happen on the way, which will give you a little bit of guidance as to what to do next, or potentially some evidence um, or some results from your evidence will come through your in-tray. As you can see here, on your way back to the office, Keith says, man, that punk Baines is a slick rat, isn't he? In usual Keith fashion, he's blazing away on his Marlboro as we drive. Keith sniffs the air and says, Gracious me, buddy boy, you've got the car smelling like a rose gun. What you gonna do with that foliage, Keith asks. Uh, give it to Marie. Oops. Keith comments, I thought you two were getting a little serious. I guess I was right. So giving it to Marie is a bit of a stretch. Um, obviously I've played this through before so I know what to say. But it's kind of logical. You know Marie's your girlfriend at this point. Alright, here we are at the office. After getting out of the car, Keith says, Man, am I glad to get out of there. It smells like a camel arena. Mostly from him smoking, no doubt, but there we go. Okay, so I don't know if this is strictly necessary, but I usually open the trunk and I take the kit out. The only reason for that is I'm not sure if you need the kit to book in the evidence, um, but potentially you can leave it in the car all the time, I don't know. But just for safety's sake, let's take it with us. Big John says, I hear Baines has escaped. I wonder where he'll go. So this is the evidence bay. Um, so we can basically now book evidence. Okay, says John, what do you have? Taking notes, John mutters, check for an identity, or check for and identify prints on enclosed four inch Smith & Wesson 38 caliber handgun. Making notations, John mumbles under his breath, Request identification of prints on enclosed fingerprint tape found in deceased jailer's car. Again, request identification on print enclosed fingerprint tape found in stolen car at Little Lytton Airport. You hand Big John the makeshift knife and request fingerprints pointing out that it was found underwater. You hand John the plaster cast footprints to John <laughs> and request they be checked for size and any unusual marks. These are hard to read through sometimes. You submit the bullets from the glove box of the jailer's car. You request fingerprint and identification analysis. You give the empty holster to Big John, who examines it briefly and then says, one holster taken from stolen car. You turn in the jail clothes and request analysis on the blood spots. You turn in the badge you found at the bottom of Clearwater River. You hand John the blood sample that you got from Cotton Cove. You ask Big John for identification analysis. Big John says, you seem to be making progress. So I believe that's all the evidence we can book in. Um, I don't think booking any of the evidence in is actually necessary for game progression. It's all just necessary for points. And over here, we can open up this bin. Uh, we can put the kit in the bin. And then we can close the bin up. Again, I don't know if this is 100% necessary. Um, but I know the next step is we're going to go basically out to dinner and it's our shift is over. So can possibly leave it in the car, but for safety, I've just locked it up in the bin. So let's have a look. Sit desk. Uh, let's look in box. You pick up and read the note. Bonds, Marie called while you're out. She wants you to call her as soon as possible. So to do that, we obviously use the phone. 
Okay, so I believe we can just dial 411. City, please, we listen. Name is Marie Willikens. Willikens, I think that's right. Okay, so to get her number, pretty straightforward. Just call directory assistance, and we know it's 555 4169. Hello. Now this is kind of funny. Um, I don't know if it actually matters what you type here, but you can say, hello, it's Sunny. Hi Marie, this is Sunny. I think you can just type talk and it works. Oh Sunny, I see you got my message. When you get off work, meet me at Arnie's, okay? Okay. I'll be waiting Sunny, see you in a little bit. Bye now. All right. So we've done that, which is good. Bonds, the cap says the captain. Go ahead and take off. You've earned your daily dollar. All right, so we can get up. Again, I don't think this matters. I definitely didn't used to do this when I used to play it through, but we can replace keys. That way the patrol car keys stay at the station, which is probably what you're supposed to do. Um, you could probably return the gun and all that sort of thing, but I've never bothered. All right, so now we go to our little compact car thing here. Open the door. Oh, it's gonna say unlock it, yep. Unlock door. Open door. Drive to eyes. You don't get the cool cop music when you're driving in your usual car, which is kind of boring. But I guess, you know, driving in your normal car is kind of boring every day. So Arnie's, as it turns out, is a restaurant. Um, I think Marie's just sort of booked us dinner, which is cool. Uh, let's see, we probably should lock our door. No one ever steals the uh, detective's car if you don't lock it, but your personal one seems a bit sketch. So let's just do a quick save because we have it for a while. And if you just watch part two, you would have noticed I uh, ran out of memory in one spot and it booted me out the game, which was a bit annoying because then I hadn't saved for a while. And I ended up having to go back quite a ways to get back to where I was. All right, so we're on Arnie's. I don't know what this like flashing thing is over here. Uh, you don't need to enter the construction area. Yeah, but I want to. Yeah, that's no fun. Well, it looks like we can just go into Arnie's. I always thought it was funny that you can see the MasterCard little Visa kind of logo in the window. I wonder if they were authorised or not. Please find a table, sir, and we'll be right with you, says the waiter. So you can see Marie sitting kind of by herself, so that's pretty obvious what you need to do. Hi, Sonny. I'm so glad to see you. Please sit down. Sit. Marie says, Oh, Sonny, I've been so worried for you. I know that Jesse Baines is looking for revenge. I know he's out to get even, especially with you. I'm scared, Sonny. Promise you'll stop in and see me sometime tomorrow. I need to know that you're alright. Okay. Thanks, Sonny. Now, at this point, um, I think you just wait for a while and the waiter kind of comes out and gives you some menus and you do the ordering. But, I think you can give the rose at any point. It doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Wait until the waiter's taking your order, so we can't give her the rose just yet. Day, sir, says the waiter. Our specials of the day are meatloaf, prime rib, and lobster. Continuing, he says, which would you prefer? Um, that's the lobster. This doesn't really matter. Very good, sir. The lobster is excellent this season. And what will you have, young lady? I'll have the lobster, says Marie. Thank you very much, sir, the waiter says. Your order will be ready shortly. 
Okay, so now I believe we can give Marie the rose. Oh, Sunny, you're wonderful. And I think at this point, um, you can talk. Uh, she looks longing to us, so and just kiss Marie. Oh, by the way, she says, how do you like my new lipstick? It's called Pink Rapture. Now, you might think this is just a passing comment, but this actually comes into play a little bit later, so you just need to remember Pink Rapture. I really like it, she says. It's my favorite. It's so pink. Kiss Marie again. Wow, you're some kisser, sonny. And just do it a third time. I think it's enough. I don't know how much more of this I can take, Sonny. Well, maybe you need to do the fourth. Marie says, listen, Sonny, we'd better go somewhere more private if you're going to keep this up. The meal is barely noticed as you and Marie take advantage of the precious moment. You see her home and the rest is history. The next day. Now, I think at this point, our wallet is still with us. So let's have a look at our inventory. So we've got a handgun, ammo, money clip, thank you letter, wallet, handcuffs, new mugshot, old mugshot, and LPD card. So that's all good. So we can get out. And lock the door. Oh, classic. I don't know why. But the keys stay in ignition in your private car, but they do not in the squad car. Kind of weird. I guess if it was in the squad car, it would get super annoying having to type take keys every time you get in and out. Alright, so before I forget, let's go over to the bin. So we will need the field kit in our next endeavor. Now, actually, before I get too far here, hey Bonds, the captain blurts. We have a traffic cop standing by down the old warehouse district with a 187 victim. Continuing, the captain says, the victim took it in the back of the head. Looks like it could be a professional hit. Sonny, the address is 160 West Rose. Take Keith and get over there. All right, so we're gonna take our keys. Let's just have a quick look at the board. Uh, the shooting schedule shows you behind on your scores, but we have rectified that in the first part. We do need to actually go back and re-qualify, but not just yet. What I was gonna say is, as I was walking through the door as well, is we have to check with robbery about the shotgun, I believe, but we can do that later when we get back to the station. The one thing you don't wanna do is, if you, um, I guess, get an order from the captain, and, well, that's weird, we didn't lock it the other day. If you get an order from the captain and you ignore it and you kind of loiter around the police station, especially if it's in his office um, or even in the car here. Uh, let's see, drive to 160 West Rose. Okay, so yeah, if you loiter around, um, he gets really cross and he'll threaten to you know, bust you down to a lower rank or something like that. If you do it enough times, you actually lose the game. So every time he gives me an order, I usually just follow it immediately. And if there's something else to do, um, I'll come back to it later. All right, so now we're on route to 160 West Rose. So we've got a 187, which is just a murder victim. And then, boy, Keith says, after yesterday, I was hoping for a slow day. So 
here. Today's a little bit slower than yesterday. I don't think we get any gunfights today. Oh, do we? Uh, not today, no. Alright, so here we are at West Rose. Officer Giuseppe's back again, it seems. Well, it's about time, Sonny. I found this car with blood dripping from the trunk, he says. Continuing, he says, the door was unlocked with the keys inside. You listen intently as he explains. I took the keys and opened the trunk. That's when I found the man with a hole in his head. Continuing, this, is registered, this car is registered to Woody Roberts. Giuseppe finishes, I called the coroner. Now you can take over this mess, Sonny. Ugh, Keith grunts as he walks past the body. I'll search the car, Sonny. You examine the trunk. Okay. So let's get our field kit just in case we need it. I thought that was going to tell us what the license plate was, but you can now actually see it physically at the trunk. Okay, so let's take a photo. You take pictures of the murder scene and return the camera to the kit. Now, I think if we look inside kit, I don't think there's anything else we particularly need at this point. So we've got a plastic bag, camera, casting plaster, gas vial, Eye dropper, fingerprint powder, brush, tape. Um, uh, let's see, dust, um, key for or keyhole, it's a bit of a stretch. Um, dust car for prints. Not sure. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Not sure we can actually get any fingerprints from this area. But what we can do is um, just close the kit so we can see what we're doing. We can search the body. Searching thoroughly, you find a corner of an envelope clutched in the victim's left hand. Uh... Corner. There you go. You pry the stiff fingers loose and take the corner of an envelope. Let's look at the corner. Corner of envelope with a name and address. Bill Cole, 753 3rd Street, Lytton City. Interesting, because Woody Roberts... Okay, there we go. The coroner is arriving, Sonny. Keith informs you. Pretty gruesome, eh, Sonny, groans Mario. How one person can do that to another is really, you know, sick. Now, I don't think we can take a blood sample at this point. It's a bit useless anyway, because the body's here. Where is this body, asked the coroner. I don't see no body, ha ha. Let me guess, the trunk. Of course, where else would it be? Yes, sirree, Bob, remarks the coroner. Definitely looks like an execution. Okay, so if we can look at the trunk again, I just want to see if we can take a blood sample. There we go. Awesome. Extra points there. So you return the eyedropper to the kit and the vial of blood for evidence. Um, let's just search the body again just to make sure there's nothing else. We've got a photo. Um, I don't think you can do this anyway. No, that's all right. So now it's important, because the coroner's here, he can take the body. Would you help me, Officer Giuseppe? asked the coroner. This fella is pretty heavy. He's on a diet now, though. Ha ha. So we'll just get out of the way. 
Now, if you don't do this step, you'll miss a critical piece of evidence. Officer Giuseppe and the coroner struggle to carry the victim into the back of the coroner's vehicle. Bye, Sonny. i got to dig up a date for tonight. Ha ha, the cheerful coroner yells over his shoulder. Okay. So he should drive off. There we go. I wonder if we can take a blood sample from the ground here. No. Already got it. Okay, so now if we look in the trunk again, there may be more evidence. You find a note which had been hidden by the body. Death threat. The note you found beneath Woody's body. On it is written, you're a dead man, Sonny Bonds. Just in case the body moves something. No, okay. Another quick look in the trunk. Okay, so now we're good. Did you find something, Sonny? Mario asks. Yes. That's great, Mario Beams. I hope it helps you catch the murderer. Well, maybe. Now, I don't believe we can lie, open the door and look inside the car, because I think Keith's doing that. Keith's working inside the car. Don't bother him. It's refreshing to see him work. Classic. All right, I think that's all there is to get here. So now, uh, let's see. Open the trunk. Put the kit in the trunk. Close the trunk. Oops. Now we're good to go again. Keith yells, wait up, Sonny. Don't leave me here. All right, time to use the radio. Keith informs dispatch your current 1020 in the situation. So there's not much to do there. Now, I think we can drive to the station this point. Actually, first, just in case I run out of memory again, let's save the game. Now, there's going to be a couple of parallel things happening here. One is, um, obviously, he's going for revenge for everyone that testified against him. So, Woody Roberts. So, after 187. Uh, you've got William Cole, um, who I think is an alias for another person that testified against him. And he's obviously after us, Sonny Bonds, but he also knew Marie. So we need to be thinking in the back of our minds, is Marie safe? At this point, we've got no evidence to suggest she isn't safe. So we can drive to the station. I think. It has been a little while since I've played it. Pretty sure that Dispatch is going to come over the, the wire now and say that we've got to go to another location. Well, actually, no, I'm a bit silly. I missed something very obvious. Okay. What did we just find? Let's get back in the car. Remember, we just found that quarter in the envelope. I think it was 753 3rd Street. Yep, okay. That's a credible lead. I'll advise dispatch, Keith says, grabbing the mic. We're responding to 753 3rd Street for a follow up. I think we may be getting somewhere, partner, he says. We better watch our butts when we get there. I hope this lead isn't a dead end. Well, not exactly. So if I remember 
correctly, 753 Coal Street is a motel. Okay, here we go. So this can be a little bit finicky. However, the man in the window says, yes, sir, what can I do for you? So we can show our ID. And because there's multiple rooms here and we've got no idea what's going on, let's just show him Baines's mugshot. Well, the manager says, the photograph is vaguely familiar. I believe his name was William Cole. He has room 108. Aha, you think to yourself, Baines is using the name Cole. Now, <clears throat> the trick is we can't just ask about the key to room 108 because obviously we're going to need a search warrant to do this legitimately. So we have to go back and use the radio. All right, so open the old door. Oops. Geez, Sonny, hold on for a second, will you? All right. Radio for warrant. Requesting one search warrant from room 108 at our 1020. Be advised, a search warrant will be obtained and delivered to your 1020. And the other thing we should do is radio for backup. Keith grabs the mic. Dispatch, 53 Mary 2, requesting backup at our 1020. A support team has been dispatched to your 1020. Okay, that's all we need at the moment. Now, the backup's important because, you know, the guy has positively identified Baines as using that room. We've got no idea if Baines is in there or not. Okay, the officer says, here's the search warrant, Sonny. Warrant. Thanks. All right. Oh, here comes the backup. The man at the window says, Yes, sir. What can I do for you now? Show warrant. You show the search warrant to the manager, and he says, Okay, now what? Get key. Anything you say, officer, the manager says, as he gives you the key to room 108. All right, so we've got some guys there with some pretty high-powered stuff. Now, this part can be a bit of a classic. Let's save the game, because this shows you how proper police procedure is really required when you come to these situations. So we're going to call this one at Motel. Right, so if we just unlock the door. Keith says, Sonny, be careful now. As the door opens, you are startled by a sudden explosion. Because of your improper positioning, you now have been blasted into oblivion. Congratulations, you've been successful in taking yourself out of the game. So, there was a very jury-rigged shotgun i believe behind the door so what you actually need to do here is get the weapon out it's not empty so we get to the side here uh you don't need to type be careful thing is open door as long as you do it from the side as the door opens you're startled by a sudden explosion Trained reflexes throw you back, slamming your gun hand against the wall. That was too close for comfort, you say to yourself. You watch as the SWAT team unloads tear gas into the room. Alright, so we don't want to go in there while the tear gas is obviously going off. Because that would be a bit much. So we just need to wait. 
and no one's come running out so it's fairly obvious at this point that there's probably no one in there despite the big gun blast and on a fast machine this only takes about five seconds to clear but on these slow ones it can take a little while The one thing I found that's kind of strange about the next bit is the SWAT team doesn't go in first. Um, we just kind of go in and they just stay outside, which is a little bit weird. But nonetheless, I guess, again, you've got to adapt this for adventure game players. So if you just stood there while they did all the work, it wouldn't be a lot of fun. Probably put the gun away. It's kind of weird. The gas is clear. It appears that you can enter the motel room. Okay, so maybe let's just bring the gun up again. Keith walks over, picks up a shotgun off the floor and says, Here's the little culprit, Sonny. I'll take it out to the car and run the numbers. Alright, so we can see here there's a bit of blood on the floor. You've got this elaborate pulley and rope system in a chair that was used with a shotgun. And back here's the bathroom. You look around the empty bathroom, you see a typical bathroom fixtures. A sink, a toilet, a shower and a mirror. Alright, so there's no banes in here so we can put our gun away, but... Oh, here comes Keith. Keith returns and says, that shotgun has wants on it from a local burglary. He continues, we can contact Burglary Division for more information. That's worthwhile noting. So now we can't just, well, we can just get in the car and drive off, but that would be the wrong thing to do. We need our trusty field kit, as always. I guess I could have got this while the uh, tear gas was clearing. But I'd forgotten that we needed it here. So this takes a little bit of imagination in places, but there is a blood stain on the floor here. I think let's go look floor, we'll see what that reveals. You look at the floor and see what appears to be of a substantial amount of blood. <clears throat> I don't really want to walk in it, we're going to avoid it. Using the eyedropper you take a sample of blood from the floor and put it in a vial. Okay, so now if we can search the bed, you don't find anything interesting. I don't know if we need to take a photo here. Click. Yeah, no, you don't. Okay. Look, I'll search on the bed. You don't find anything interesting. Now you've got to be very precise with this, I think. Maybe it's look on the bed. Can't see anything from here. This has got me a couple of times in the past. There we go. There is a tube of lipstick under the bed. You take the lipstick. The label reads Pink Rapture by Donna Lee Cosmetics. This is the same brand Marie uses, you think. Mm, that's ominous. Um, let's do a look bed. You notice that the bed is unmade. Um, I don't think there's anything to collect from here. No. So, let's look at some other features of the room. We've got a nightstand here. <clears throat> it's a common type of motel nightstand with a single drawer. You open the drawer and look inside. You find an envelope with a corner torn off. As you examine the envelope, you compare it with a piece of paper found on Roberts and <laughs> they match. Also note that the envelope is addressed to Woody Roberts. Okay, so based on that, if we look at the envelope again, there is a letter inside.
uh, read letter. After reading the letter, you ponder its contents and think. Baines mailed the letter hoping to suck Roberts in by offering him a business deal. Roberts fell for it and responded to the letter. He came to the motel room where Baines killed him in cold blood. Okay, so looks like Baines has been using this motel room as a bit of a base for operations. The only thing that doesn't plausibly make sense to me is it appears that only one or two days has gone by since Baines escaped. How can he write a letter and then, you know, have Woody Roberts basically come down here and then kill him? The only thing I can think of is he wrote that letter from jail and he kind of prepared it and he knew he was going to come to this motel room at this particular time and date. So... I guess, again, this adventure game's got to work. If it took place over a month, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. And it'd be very tedious to play. Okay, so now we've just got the bathroom left. So if we look, toilets, we'll start with. Nothing special, it's just a normal motel toilet. I don't think we can open the toilet. Nope. We can look at the sink. Looking at the tiled sink, you see what appears to be a business card. You pick up the card. Well, let's have a look at it. Colby's business card found in Baines Motel Room. So Colby imports Steelton USA and then a phone number. Uh, I think there was still one more thing I haven't looked. A shower and a mirror. We open the mirror. We look at the mirror. You don't have time for self-admiration. Look at the shower. Normal size shower, nothing here. I wonder if we can turn the shower on. No, can't do that either. I think we've exhausted um, pretty much everything. Let's look at the sink again. Sometimes it'll find the second thing, but it doesn't. I think we've exhausted everything here. So we've got a lead. We've got the Colby Imports of Steelton. We've found out how Baines got uh, Woody Roberts here. And we've got a blood sample, and more worryingly, we found the lipstick, which seems to belong to Marie. So let's head out. Oh, do we need to dust anything for prints? We probably do. So we're not quite done yet. Uh, let's go... Dust the chair. Or prints. Uh, look table. I think it's a table. Um, look under table. I said nothing on top of the table. You see a pulley mounted to the table. It was part of the booby trap. Okay. Uh, dust the table. The prints. Dust the pulley for prints. Uh, doesn't look like it. I already did this, didn't I? Not thinking. All right, it's so none there. Let's try dusting the nightstand. <clears throat> Prints. Uh, dust the drawer. Dust the lamp. A lot of dusting for prints in this game. Uh, oops. None there. Um, all right. I can't remember if we do find any prints in this room. Um, None there. None there. Uh, maybe let's try the TV. All right. I think that's going to... Well, we can dust the f picture, I guess. Mm. 
Okay, that's enough time dusting for prints. Drop a comment below if I miss somewhere. And there is actually a print in this room, but it doesn't look like there is. Okay, so now what we can do is we can put the kit back in the trunk. As we have done a million times. Close the trunk. Now, we have a bit to radio in. So obviously we found some stuff here, which is great. Um, I don't know how much of it is actually going to be radioed in. Like in real life, you'd radio a lot of this in. No, just informs dispatch for the 10, 20 year situation. Um, I think that's pretty much it. <clears throat> now let's drive to Marie's because we found her lipstick. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about, Sonny, but let's not waste any time. All right. 222 West Peach Street. So yeah, finding lipstick is a bit of a concern. Oh, we can dust that for print. Oh, we can do that in a minute, I guess. So, yeah, very concerning because why else would Baines have that shade of lipstick? Let's go, Sonny. But first, let's get the field kit. Let's leave the trunk open just for fun. There is a note pinned to the door. Take note. You take the note off the door. The note says, Dear Sonny, gone shopping, love Marie. Seems a little sketch. Let's dust the door for print. All right. Let's go in. The door is locked. Fortunately, you know there is a spare key hidden above the door. You get the key, unlock the door, and replace the key. The appearance of Marie's living room speaks for itself. Your heart sinks and your head starts swimming. Oh Marie, you think, what has that maniac done with you? Trying to keep your composure, you say to Keith. Okay Keith, why don't you go check out back of the house? I'll look around here. You can see this place is pretty messed up. Um, this thing on the couch here is a phone. So we're going to look at the phone. The phone is on the sofa with a cord ripped from the wall. Let's dust it for prints. Not worth processing. So if we just go look floor, you see a lamp turned over on the floor and ashtray is next to it. <clears throat> Let's touch the ashtray for prints. Carefully you apply the dust mumbling to yourself, here's one worth taking. Oh yeah. Alright, so we've got to print off the ashtray. Now, if you find one print, that's generally all you're going to find in an area from what I know about Police Quest 2. So now we can look at the ashtray. In the ashtray, you see a partially burned piece of paper. So I'll just take the paper. You pick it up and carefully unfold it. You read over a list of names. Roberts, Wilkins, Colby, Bonds. So this looks like a hit list. Mercy, mercy, you think to yourself as you realize this is Bane's hit list and now that murderous scumbag has Marie. Now there's no evidence that Marie has been killed yet. Um, so if we go, let's just go look lamp since it's here. It'll never work again. I said, I don't think there's any wasted effort yet. Uh, I think if you try and open this door, 
There are signs of a struggle in Marie's bathroom. Marie is not here. You close the door. Let's just have a look at the kitchen. Somehow in the middle of all the mess, the kitchen remains tidy and neat. I think we can't go out back because that's where Keith is. The hall leads to the single bedroom. You see nothing out of the ordinary. Keith's taking care of it. Okay, cool. So we don't need to go into the bedroom. Uh, I don't think we need to take the ashtray. No. All right, that's about it for Marie's house. So the best lead we've got now is basically the Steelton lead with Colby. So you know he hasn't come after us yet. And that's our best chance of finding where he is and our best chance of hopefully finding Marie. Now this one we do need to radio in because we need to tell Dispatch to be on the lookout for, well, Marie basically. Keith keys the mic and informs the dispatch of the bad news. It appears the occupant of the house one Marie Wilkins has been kidnapped. Please advise the captain. 53 Mary 2, copy the possible 207 kidnap and will 10 5 the information to 53 Mary 1. Keith manages and encourages his smile. We'll get her back, Sonny. And that we will. So let's give it a quick save game here. And let's call this one after Marie's. All right, let's go back to the station. So the first thing we need to do is try and contact this Colby person um, from the business card and basically let them know what's going on. We notice also that it's, uh, I think the city of listed was Steelton. So we can also use that business card to uh, kind of give us that bit of information that he might be heading to Steelton, um, regardless of Colby or not. And then we can also call the Steelton PD, and I believe let them know we're coming. I think this is the point we do that. All right, so we're gonna leave the kit in the trunk just because why not? And I don't think we need it to book the evidence because it should all be in our yeah, vial of blood is there. Uh, note from Marie's door, a fingerprint. Yeah, cool. So all that stuff is actually in our possession, not in the kit. So let's go and book some evidence. Big John says, I hear Baines has escaped. I wonder where he'll go. Oh, hang on a second, this may be a mistake. I needed the number on that business card. But that doesn't exactly matter because we can ask for the business card back here at the window. All right, so we've got the prints enclosed in the fingerprint tape from the car, the victim list, the Colby business card, the envelope, the corner of the envelope, the blood sample from the trunk, Blood sample from the motel. My, my, we've been busy, haven't we? Big John says, smiling. All right, so we can ask for the card. Um, I believe we can get the business card for him. Um... Okay. Um, what do you have to book? 
Past for the Colby card. Oh man, I may have made a mistake here. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to restore back and I'm going to note down the phone number on that card. Um, that way I know what to call. I will be back in just one second. Okay, and we're back. So I just restored back and just looked at the number on Colby's card and noted on a bit of paper. So I now know what to call in a minute. But first, let's go ask about that shotgun. So this is the robbery division here. I think we just go to this guy in the middle of the room. Oh yes, says Detective Simpson. We just worked a recent pawn shop burglary. Taken in that burglary were two shotguns, a 32 automatic with silencer and ammunition. Okay, so that's the trick. We now know a 32 was also taken as well as the shotgun. So Baines has another weapon. Now you might be thinking, oh well, you know, why is that important? But it does help some decision making later on that you know Baines. You know, he originally had the jailer's gun, which we found. He had the shotgun, which obviously went off as we tried to open the door. And he's also got one other weapon. Um, I don't know if we can get any more information about it. Uh, probably not. All right. So a little bit more info there, which is handy for us. Now let's go back and see what leads we can get with the Steelton angle. Sorry to hear about Marie, Sonny, Captain Fletcher offers. If your boys have a solid lead, now's the time to bring it up. Okay. So what we're going to do, is we're going to take a seat. Look at our inbox. In the basket, you see a manila envelope. You remove the envelope, which is marked Crime Lab. While opening the envelope, you think, it's the test results on the evidence. Fingerprint tape, location found, the glove box of the deceased jailer's car, positive match, Jesse H. Baines. Another one from the rear view mirror of the stolen car this time, another positive match of Jesse Baines. Footprint cast on the riverbank was found to be a size 10D, brand new, end of report. Cool, so we know that um, Baines was obviously in those locations, nothing else in the in-tray. All right, so now we can use the phone. So let's give this Colby person a call. So 407-555-3323 was the number on the business card. Now I think uh, we can go warn about Baines. Hello, this is Detective Bonds from the Lytton Police Department. What do you want? Jesse Baines has escaped from Lytton Jail. You'd better be on the lookout for him because he's been getting rid of anyone who, who helped put him behind bars. That's kind of hard to believe. I'm in Steelton though, under a witness protection program, so I'm not worried. Well, I gotta go. So he was a bit useless and very dismissive. So now we're gonna just do a 411. And we're gonna go Steelton. I think this is the right time to do it. Go police. 407, 507. Let's gonna write this down, 555, 2677. Okay, so now let's see if we, I'm not sure if this is the right time to call him yet or not, but let's just give him a call. Hello, Steelson Police Department, Lieutenant Miller speaking. Let's just say Sonny Bonds. This is Detective Sonny Bonds from Linton PD. Hello, Detective Bonds, is there something I can do for you? Warn about beans. 
Jesse Baines escaped jail yesterday and has gone on a rampage, killing anyone who put him behind bars. Donald Colby lives in Steelton now and could be the next victim. You should tap Colby's phone to see if Baines calls. The phone tap is a good idea. Thanks a lot for the information. I'll see you later. So that's another important one because uh, it kind of leads us to our next clue. Well, not our next clue, but a clue later on, which leads us to where um, Colby actually is. Because we haven't got an address or anything. We just got a phone number. Okay, I think that's all we need to dial out at the moment. Uh, let's see. Don't think there's anything else in tray. Now, pretty much, there's nothing to do except, you know, potentially now go to Steelton. Um, I think we can potentially also open up the locker here. Um... Let's open up the cabinet. There might be something on Colby's file that can be useful. Uh, Jesse Baines, Lonnie West. Um, nope. Maybe the computer might help us. Alright, turn on the computer. Uh, let's do a DIR. Let's go CD criminal. DIR. Uh, let's go vice, because I think that's where he was. Um, ice cream. Where am I now? Oh, I've got to go back. Vice. It was ice cream, pistachio, and Miami. Oh, yeah, classic. Vice, Miami Vice. Who would have thought? All right, so now we've got some files here. So we can go to Donald Colby. So Donald Colby, address is confidential. Uh, if we look down, arrest was the sale of narcotics, which was us in Police Quest 1. It was never incarcerated. Um, how do I go to the next page on this thing? Enter. There we go. He received a one-year sentence which was suspended with no parole. Probation for a year. He turned state's witness provided a testimony against the murder trial against Jesse Baines. Subject relocated on state witnesses protection program. So that's about all we can learn there from uh, Don Colby. We can look at Marie's file just for fun. Um, you can see here she was never convicted. Um, she provided assistance in Jesse Baines. And then I think, uh, let's see, there's no one else in here. We can look at Woody Roberts. He's the one that was found in the back of the uh, car. He was arrested for the uh, illegal gambling, four-year probation for the stand, turning state's witness. I think that's all we need. All right, so we can exit this. All right, now let's just do one last save because the next part is going to get a little tricky. So let's go down here to, where are we? That one will do. So I'll call this after um, Colby phone call. We know roughly what that is. All right. So now looking at the time, we're up to about our 50 minute mark like usual. This is going to do it for part three of Police Quest 2. The next part will be the final part where we basically are going to take off to Steelton and see if we can get ahead of Bane since he's always been one head or one step ahead of us up to now. It's kind of going to pay to get, you know, try and get there first, get to Colby and see if we can intercept him. At this point, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. It really does help promote the videos and does help the channel to grow. And also, if you've enjoyed it, consider having a look at some of the other playthroughs I've done. Potentially Police Quest 1, there's Space Quest, all sorts of things in the adventure game genre. That's still going to do it for me this time. I'll catch you on the next one. 
I'll see you then later.